Jesus, what a friend for sinners. Jesus, lover of my soul. Welcome to the Unknown Bible, the broadcast ministry of Bible Believers Baptist Church in Corpus Christi, Texas. Join us now for today's Bible study with our pastor, Bevins Welder. You know, the question and subject of tithing comes up time and time again, not too often around our church because people understand the doctrine from the Bible and don't have any problem with it at all. But it comes up in, in conversations really that you hear stuff being broadcast on the radio and maybe overhearing conversation among Christians and so forth. And so I figure what we'll do today is we'll just go through the Bible uh, the beauty of preaching on tithing, I really believe that you tithe to your lo in, in your local church. You tithe to the Lord, but you tithe in your local church. And so I'm not concerned that I'm going to convince somebody today that, you know, they need to send their tithe uh, to us for this radio broadcast. N not going there at all. I feel very confident today that I can teach you on the subject without you sensing any pressure from us uh, regarding uh, your finances or that you would sense any pressure from us or any invitation from us that we're looking for your money. We're not. Um, we're very thankful that this broadcast is a ministry of the church, and it is not one that we use to solicit contributions from other people by calling it listener-supported. We've certainly had listeners from time to time who have supported this ministry in some way, shape, or form, and we're thankful for that, of course. I'm very, very thankful for that, of course, but it was never our intention to use this in any way to ask for money or to give people the impression that we wanted their money or even needed their money. None of those things are true. We look to the Lord for these things, and so consequently, when we have the opportunity to teach you something on giving or on tithing, it is for your benefit. It is for your understanding in the Scripture. It is for your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It is for your study so that you can go and hear the things that you've heard and then look in the Bible and see what the Bible has to say about these things and how they may pertain to you. So with that understanding, let's basically talk now about the subject of Christians tithing. Should Christians tithe? And I believe they should. I believe the answer to that question is yes. However, there are basically two schools of thought on the subject of tithing in the New Testament. Uh, there are those who believe that tithing was given under the law and is therefore not for us in the church age because we're not under the law, we're under grace. And then there are those who hold that tithing began before the law and thus continues into the church age because it was not, um, you know, it was not, it, it, when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he did not abolish the enmity between us and Israel and didn't uh, take away this um, understanding of a tenth and whose it was and what was supposed to be done with it. So let's go through and look at both sides. Let's look at both schools. Those, those who argue against tithing today say that we are not supposed to tithe, and they give us basically five reasons for this stand. Uh, number one, they say that tithes were paid to Levitical priests, of which we now have none, and that's true. Uh, they were paid to Levitical priests. Look with me in Hebrews chapter 7, Hebrews chapter 7, and look at verse 5. All right, Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 5, And verily they that are of the sons of Levi, who receive the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is, of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. That is a true statement, obviously. And so, under the law, uh, Israel was to tithe to the, Le the, to the Levitical priests. Okay? Uh, the second thing regarding tithing as an Old Testament doctrine is that tithes were given to sustain the Levites and the priests. Let's go now to Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 10, Nehemiah chapter 10 and verse 37 and 38, okay? 
Nehemiah 10, 37 and 38. All right, here the Bible says, And that we should bring the first fruits of our dough, and our offerings, and the fruit of all manner of trees, of wine, and of oil, unto the priests, to the chambers of the house of our God, and the tithes of our ground unto the Levites, that the same Levites might have the tithes in all the cities of our tillage. And the priest... The son of Aaron shall be with the Levites when the Levites take the tithes. And the Levites shall bring up the tithe of the tithes unto the house of our God to the chambers into the treasure house. Okay, so the second thing we see is that tithes were given to sustain the Levites and the priests. Uh, we didn't go back into the, uh, you know, the first five books of the Old Testament to look at it. We look at its application going on even in the days of Nehemiah, still in the Old Testament, okay? The third thing that those who argue that tithing today is not for the Christians, it was only for those in the Old Testament, uh, go on to say that not only were tithes paid to the Levitical priests, of which we now have none, and were given to sustain the Levites and the priests, but that tithes were also taken specifically to Jerusalem, to Jerusalem, Deuteronomy chapter 12, Deuteronomy chapter 12, and look with me in verses 5 and 6, and then look at verse 11, Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses 5 and 6, and verse 11. The Bible says, But unto the place which the Lord your God shall choose, out of all your tribes, so notice he says, I'm, I'm assigning a place. And if you look at those two words, the place, the place, and you read through uh, Moses' writings, you're going to find that God kept telling Israel, when we get to the land of Canaan, when we get to the promised land, I'm going to set aside a place. And that's where your, your men are going to come three times in the year and also do what we're reading here in Deuteronomy chapter 12. And that place is Jerusalem. But unto the place which the Lord your God shall choose out of all your tribes to put his name there, even unto his habitation, and that's where the temple was built, shall you seek, and thither thou shalt come, and thither ye shall bring your burnt offerings, and your sacrifices, watch it, and your tithes, and heave offerings of your hand, and your vows, and your free will offerings, and the firstlings of your herds, and of your flocks. Now look at verse 11. Then there shall be a place which the Lord your God shall choose to cause his name to dwell there. Thither shall you bring all that I command you, your burnt offerings and your sacrifices, your tithes and the heave offerings of your hand and all your choice vows which you vow unto the Lord. So you see, he says, I'm going to set aside a place and it is going to be the habitation un unto his habitation. Well, when the temple was built in Jerusalem, that was the habitation, and the place was Jerusalem, and that's where the tithes were to be taken. So that's good, all right? All that makes perfect sense, and all of it's true. Now, those who argue against tithing today say that we're not supposed to tithe because not only were tithes to be taken to Jerusalem, but tithes were brought to the storehouse. Tithes were brought to the storehouse. For this, turn to Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3 is often preached in a stewardship uh, weeks or months uh, in churches. I've heard those, in, like for instance, in Southern Baptist churches. And this passage of Scripture we're going to look at now is one of the passages to show the duty. Uh, but if you look at it clearly, it is a place called the storehouse, and we don't have a place like that today. Look at me with me in uh, Malachi chapter 3. We'll begin in verse 8 for the context. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me, but you say, Wherein have we robbed thee? And the Lord answers, In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Now, what nation is he talking about? Of course, he's talking about Israel. Keep reading. Verse 10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the wind of windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, and there shall not be room enough to receive it. Well, clearly, mine house, meat in mine house, is uh, the temple, and the storehouse is the place where the tithes were to be brought, and the nation is Israel. 
and, and the robbery is against God, and the robbery was over tithes and offerings, and he says, you're cursed with a curse, but if you if you get back to the business at hand, I'll open you the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing, and there shall not be room enough to receive it. All right, that's all addressed to Israel. Now, I realize that these things have been spiritualized and preached uh, by pastors in their churches to suggest to the folks that they're preaching to, they're robbing God if they're not paying the tithe at the church, okay? But clearly, doctrinally, the passage is to Israel, and it is to the temple, and, and it is to a, a place called the storehouse. And then finally, those who argue against tithing today say that we're not supposed to tithe because a portion of the tithes from farming and ranching was actually eaten Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 23. That is, they would make the tithe and then they would, and then they would eat a portion of it when they brought it. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 14, and look at verse 23. Um, and thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose to place his name there, the tithe of thy corn, of thy wine, and of thy oil, and the firstlings of thy herds and of thy flocks, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. So they actually got to eat a portion of the tithe. Well, there you go. Those are some of the principal portions of the law concerning the tithe uh, under the law. Okay? But there is the, also this um, uh, other uh, view on tithing that includes tithing in the New Testament. And the reason that uh, people who teach that and believe it say that the first instance of tithing came years before the law, that tithing wasn't something that started under the law, but that tithing is something that started before the law. Abraham was the first man to tithe. He gave 10% or a tithe to a priest named Melchizedek, the priest of the Most High God. He gave him a tenth of the spoils that he recovered from Ketolaomer and the kings that were with him when they went to bring back Lot and Lot's family and all of his possessions and those that had been taken captive by them. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 14. Genesis chapter 14. You'll see it here. All right, in Genesis chapter 14, look with me in verse 17. All right, the attack, you have to read all of this to see it, but the attack takes place uh, when, the, when the kings, the four kings, come from Shinar and, El and Elasar and Elam, and, and they come with title king of nations. That's Genesis 14, 1. Those four kings come, and they fight against the five kings of Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, Zeboam, and Zoar. And they win. Those four kings beat the kings of Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, Zeboam, and Zoar. Lot and his family and all his possessions are taken with these others. And so what happens is Abraham finds out about it and then he attacks. When he does, he conquers these kings. He recovers all that has been taken, all the people and all the possessions, and he comes back. On his way back, watch what happens. Genesis 14, 17, the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Ketelaramur, and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Shevi, which is the king's dale. Here we go, verse 18. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. Verse 19. And he blessed him, and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. Verse 20. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand, watch it, and he gave him tithes of all. And he gave him tithes of all. So Abram tithed to Melchizedek tithes of all that they had recovered in that battle. Uh, you'll see it again in Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7, and in verses 1 and 2. We read this. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, 
to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. So the tithe is a tenth. A tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, that's Melchizedek, and after that also king of Salem, that was where he was king, which is king of peace. So king of righteousness and king of peace is what Melchizedek stands for over the area where he was king or a priest. Okay? Now, um, that's very interesting. So, in Hebrews chapter 7, since we've gone back there, we see the significance of what Abraham did. Abraham, when he gave a tenth, when he gave a tithe of all that he had recovered to Melchizedek, he demonstrated five things. Number one, he demonstrated that tithes were paid to a priest that did not descend from Levi. Hebrews chapter 7, look at verse 6. Hebrews chapter 7, look at verse 6. But whose, he whose descent is not counted from him, from them, received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. Let's read the context. We've already read verse 5. We'll read it again. Hebrews 7, 5. Verily they that are of the sons of Levi who received the office of the priesthood have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is, of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. But he whose descent is not counted from them, that is, from Levi, received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promise or the promises. So first thing we see is that tithes were paid to a priest that did not descend from Levi. So this is very, very different than tithing under the law because tithing under the law was to the Levitical priest. Secondly, secondly, what we learn from Genesis chapter 14 and then subsequently Hebrews chapter 7 is that the priest to whom the tithes were paid lived forever. Hebrews chapter 7. All right, we've read verse 6. Let's read verse 7 for the context. Verse 8 contains the information we're looking for. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed to the better. That is, Abraham being blessed by Melchizedek, the less was blessed to the better. And here, men that die receive tithes, but there he receiveth them, of whom it is witnessed that he liveth. So Melchizedek received a tithe from Abraham and Melchizedek, unlike the Levitical priests, doesn't die. That's interesting. Is a man or a priest that lives forever. Third thing, when Abraham tithed to Melchizedek, he demonstrated that Levi, who was in the loins of Abraham, paid tithes to the priest. Keep reading in Hebrews chapter 7, verses 9 and 10. As I, and as I may so say, Levi also, who, received, who receiveth tithes, paid tithes in Abraham, for he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. What is, what is Paul saying here in Hebrews chapter 7, verses 9 and 10? He's saying that although it was Abraham who paid the tithe till Melchizedek, Levi, in essence paid those tithes to Melchizedek because he was in the loins of Abraham, showing that the priesthood of Melchizedek is superior to the priesthood of Levi. That's what he's showing. And because the Levitical priesthood was not perfect, it was necessary that Jesus Christ, our high priest of the tribe of Judah, should come. That's what Hebrews chapter 7, verses 11 through 14 show us. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the, after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law, for he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe, of which no man gave attendance at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord, speaking of Jesus Christ, sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning the priesthood. So, <laughs> that's a very interesting thing. Jesus Christ is from Judah. The Levitical priests are from Levi. And boy, there's a major difference there. So, as it concerns tithing under the law, it's all Levitical. It's all under the law. But as it concerns tithing the way that Abraham did, it, it was tithed to Melchizedek, who typifies the Lord Jesus Christ and is not connected to the tribe of Levi. 
So Paul concludes his comment in Hebrews chapter 7, verses 15 to 17, by saying, Our high priest Jesus lives forever, just like Melchizedek did. Hebrews chapter 7, verses 15 to 17. And it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. For he testifieth, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Oh, boy. Oh, that's, a, that's an eye opener. So what do we what do we what do we conclude then if if we have these two lines of priesthood if we have these two episodes of tithing if we have uh, one typical of Jesus Christ what does that tell us then well that tells us when a man tithes in the new testament he is not tithing after the order of the levitical priesthood he is not tithing after the order of the law he is tithing to the Lord after the example of Abraham in Genesis chapter 14. And that's significant. That's significant because Abraham is our father in the faith. When you read the book of Romans, you find that our faith follows the faith of faithful Abraham. He received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also, and the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in his steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had yet being uncircumcised. So what is he saying? He says that he, Abraham covers the faith both of those under the law, those that are circumcised, and those that are not, those that are Gentiles like us. And that's very interesting. So, so, when a man in the New Testament tithes, he's not tithing under the order of the Levitical, Levitical priesthood. He's tithing after the example of Abraham, our father in the faith, according to his tithe to Melchizedek, a type of the Lord Jesus Christ, in Genesis chapter 14. And you know what? A, a person, I believe, should do this because he is giving to God what already belongs to God. I'll show you what I mean. Now, for this definition, go to Le Leviticus chapter 27. You say, well, Leviticus chapter 27 is under the law. Indeed, it is. But the definition is true of the tithe. Look in Leviticus chapter 27. All right. And look at verse 30. Leviticus chapter 27, and look at verse 30. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. What is he saying? All the tithe is the Lord's. You say, well, you cut out of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree. I did. The indication, truly, is that the tithe is the Lord's. In other words, that's not something over which you and I have the discretion to decide whether we want to give it. I mean, I realize we can choose not to, but the truth of the matter is it's still the Lord's. <laughs> the tithe is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. So our conclusion is that the tithe is rightfully God's regardless whether you're under the law or not and regardless whether you pay it or not. It's still the Lord's. So, as we bring this to conclusion, let me just say this. In observing Christians and their finances over the years, uh, we've seen a truth confirmed over and over again. Christians who tithe are consistently in better financial shape than Christians who don't. Some Christians in financial difficulty have decided to begin tithing, not really knowing how they were going to get an additional 10% in order to make that tithe. They didn't have enough income to meet all of their bills before they started tithing, but they trusted God. And miraculously, it seems, God fixed their finances so that they could meet their tithe and all their other financial obligations. You say, well, that's surprising to me. It shouldn't be. 
it should not come as a surprise to you or to me at all. You say, why? Because in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 11, Paul said this to the Corinthians, He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Now watch it. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. As it is written, He hath dispersed abroad, He hath given to the poor, His righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us thanksgiving to God. The idea is that once you become obedient to the Lord in the tithe, which is already His, the Lord's blessings are such that the financial necessities are met, and there is sufficiency in all things. Now, people have perverted this into a get-rich uh, scheme, and they've said, if you give me a thousand, God will give you ten thousand. All that craziness and nonsense. Ah, don't, don't get yourself fretting about that at all. That's, that's, that's hocus-pocus nonsense. There are those who have been blessed. Please don't misunderstand me. But that's not the incentive here. The incentive here is to do the right thing with regard to the Lord's money and trust the Lord to do the right thing in His ability to give you the wealth that's necessary for your needs. It's an amazing thing how that works out, but even when things are tight, Paul said, I've learned how to be abased and I've learned how to abound. Paul I mean, it showed us that God teaches us many things in those times, but you know what he's looking for? He's simply looking for obedience. So we take it that Christians indeed should tithe, but it's based on the example of Abraham, not based on on the example of Levi. Really hope this has been a help to you and gives you some clarification on the subject of tithing for Christians. Amen. You have been listening to The Unknown Bible, the radio ministry of Bible Believers Baptist Church in Corpus Christi, Texas. For information about our church, go to our church website at www.my3bc.com. That's my, the number three, bc.com. If you would like to contact us by telephone, our number is 361-241-6100. Bible Believers Baptist Church is a Bible-believing church located at 1701 Rand Morgan Road. If you are not currently a member of a Bible-believing church and you are looking for a church with an uncompromising stand on the words of God, come visit with us this Sunday or Wednesday. We would love to see you. Hallelujah.